this is an unprecedented uh, step. It's not only for the Indian judiciary, but for Indian democracy. Their conscience has been pricking them, and that's why they have chosen to take this unprecedented step. The Chief Justice, that certain things are not in order, therefore you should take remedial measures. Unfortunately, our uh, efforts failed. I think all four should be impeached, but they should be set up. Well, day after four, the senior most judges of India's Supreme Court held a press conference to raise questions against the Chief Justice of India. The Attorney General K.K. Venugopal has now said that they are hopeful that the crisis will get resolved by today. Venugopal said the press conference by judges could have been avoided. His reaction comes after Justice Chalameshwar, along with Justice Ranjan Gogoi, Justice Lokar, and Justice Stephen Korean, alleged that the administration of the top court is not in order. Meanwhile, India's Supreme Court Bar Association will meet at 5 o'clock with the hope to get the matter resolved amicably. The Modi government is trying to resolve the crisis as soon as possible. The principal secretary to Prime Minister Modi has now met with the Chief Justice of India at his home this morning. In the whole controversy, the central government and the BJP referendum to prefer to remain silent and avoid any media response after the Supreme Court judges' press conference. The judges also released a letter to the media which the judges had wrote to the Chief Justice a few months ago. The judges had alleged nepotism in the assignment of the cases and questioned transparency in making roster and the appointment of India's judges. The Supreme Court judges' unprecedented press conference has now sparked a political slugfest. The BJP has accused the opposition party, the Congress, of trying to politicize the internal issues of the judiciary. The BJP spokesperson says the concerns raised by the judges was an internal matter of the court. This after Congress President Rahul Gandhi said that democracy was in danger. With the differences coming out in the open, Congress is now encashing it for the political benefit against the Modi government. Points that have been raised by the four judges are extremely important. They have mentioned that there is a threat to democracy. I think it needs to be looked into. It needs to be looked into carefully. They've also made a point about Judge Loya's case. I think that is also something that needs to be investigated properly. It needs to be looked at from the highest level to the Supreme Court. While the Indian judicial controversy is unprecedented in its scale, the top judges coming out and making allegations against a sitting Chief Justice, their boss. And this could have serious implications. Well, after all, the judiciary has guided this country when the executive and the legislature fail to deliver. And by all accounts, people repose the faith in the judiciary. It is, after all, the last resort for an ordinary Indian citizen. So, it could be argued that the developments could erode the public's faith in the judiciary. And, of course, you can forget that the executive and the judiciary not long ago sparred over the appointments of the judges. In fact, the court says and tried the, t the tried and tested method of selecting judges is all right. The government, though, thinks otherwise. The debate could be reignited. What about the lower judiciary? Well, the Supreme Court is the guiding light for the lower judiciary. The Supreme Court holds them accountable. The House divided, the lower judiciary of India will face a leadership crisis. Last but not least, hundreds of thousands of cases pending with the courts will suffer. And this is where it hurts the most. Well, Friday's events will hit the image of the judiciary not just domestically but across the world. The global perception of India's judicial system has anyway been a matter of concern. Well, back in 2016, the world's Justice Project's Rule of Law Index put India at the 66th place among 133 countries around the world, 113 rather. India performed better than its BRICS partners, China and Russia, but ranked below South Africa and Brazil. India, on the other hand, ranked 77 for its regulatory performance enforcement and 93rd 
for the civil justice. Well, the ranking on civil justice relies on parameters like the effectiveness of enforcement, the presence of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, the absence of government influence and corruption. But there is, of course, still some reason to cheer. India ranked 28th on the open government and 35th on the government constraints. And those who conducted the study said that the rule of law affects the business environment, the public participation and conflict resolution of the country. Uh, moving on now, a helicopter with seven people on board has now gone missing near Mumbai's coast in the Indian state of Maharashtra. The chopper lost contact with air traffic control around 30 nautical miles off Mumbai's coast. The chopper was carrying the employees of India's leading oil company, ONGC. Its last contact was with the chopper's crew was established around 10.30 this morning. The chopper belonged to Pavan Hans, the aviation company, which was hired for ONGC. Again, breaking news now coming in. A chopper gone missing in the Indian state of Maharashtra around 10.30 this morning. Moving on, a U.S. court has now charged a three-year-old Moving on now, a U.S. court has now charged three-year-old Sharon Matthews, the Indian-American foster father, with murder. A grand jury has charged Wesley Matthews with capital murder. The murder charge could carry the death penalty. The toddler's autopsy report showed that she had died of violence. But the exact cause of death still remains unclear. Initially, Wesley Matthews told police that he had asked his daughter to stand outside their house as punishment for not drinking her milk though his story had changed after her body was found by a dog. The father said he had forced his daughter to drink the milk and she had choked and then died. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu began his six-day visit to India from Sunday. The two countries, Israel and India, hope to boost trade and defense ties and iron out differences arising from New Delhi's decision to scrap a defense deal. India is Israel's biggest arms market, buying around $1 billion worth of weapons every year. Israel's state-owned defense contract has now announced on January 3rd that India had canceled a $500 million order to buy its spike anti-tank guided missiles. Reports say that India would instead opt for a homemade anti-tank missile. But despite the cancellation of the missile deal, India's defense ministry said this month it had cleared a plan worth $72 million to buy 131 Barrack surface-to-air missiles built by Rafael. The two countries have grown closer since Narendra Modi became India's Prime Minister in 2014. We're widening the commercial cooperation beyond their long-standing defense ties. In July of last year, Narendra Modi became the first Prime Minister from India to visit Israel in the last 70 years. For the deals for gas and the oil cooperation, cybersecurity and the agricultural projects are still on the cards. Well, the celebrations of Lohri have already started in northern India. Lohri is a popular festival which commemorates the harvesting of winter crops and holds immense importance for the farmers from this community. Lohri also marks the onset of spring. This popular wintertime folk festival is believed to be the longest night of the year in the lunar calendar. Flight operations in the Indian city of Chennai were suspended for at least five hours this morning because of thick smog and poor visibility at the airport's runway. Take a look at this. Air quality dipped in Chennai as the day started with bungalow festivities, which includes lighting bonfires in the streets with agricultural and household waste. The air quality index in several parts of Chennai was in the hazardous category. Visibility dropped to 50 meters. At least 10 Chennai-bound flights were diverted. Well, the latest on the rape and the murder of a seven-year-old girl in Pakistan, Zainab Ansari. Police have now released the sketch of the suspect. A post-mortem of the child's body reveals that the same culprit had raped and murdered five other children in Kasur. इस शहर के अंदर जो है जो मैं समझता हूं हम सब बच्चे वाले हैं आज हम इसकी बुनियाद पर ना तो सियासत कर सकते हैं ना ही किसी को सियासत करने का हक दे सकते हैं क्योंकि बेटियां बेटियां सबकी सांझी होती हैं
Well, police say Zainab's rape and murder is the 11th incident of a girl being abducted, raped and killed in the past year in Kasur. DNA test results have confirmed that one person carried out six of these crimes. The incident has generated nationwide outrage with many protests breaking out across Pakistan. ये दुरुस्त है कि आज तक जब ये 11 वाकयात हुए उनमें से 6 वाकयात की डीएनए फोरेंसिक जो बच्चियों की बॉडी से स्वैब लिया गया वो ये एस्टैब्लिश कर रही है कि वो डीएनए कंफर्म करते हैं एविडेंस की बुनियाद पर कि ये किसी एक परपीटेटर का काम है आई डिमांड जस्टिस एंड बाय जस्टिस आई मीन कैपिटल पनिशमेंट फॉर द एक्चुअल परपीटेटर्स and all the legislators should be held accountable. All the responsible governments and government agencies should be held accountable as well. The United States said it has not received any formal communication from Pakistan on suspending military and intelligence cooperation. The U.S. reaction comes after Pakistani leadership claimed that they have stopped military and intelligence cooperation with Washington. Meanwhile, a CIA spokesman refused comment on the intelligence cooperation with Islamabad in view of Trump's decision to freeze all the security assistance to Pakistan. The U.S. said it expects Pakistan to take decisive action against terror groups based within their own borders. Meanwhile, Pakistan's army chief, Kamar Bajwa, has conveyed its displeasure to a top U.S. general about Washington's criticism of Islamabad that it was not doing enough to tackle terror. Ties between the United States and Pakistan strained after U.S. President Donald Trump on New Year tweeted that Washington has got nothing except lies and deceit from Pakistan despite giving billions of dollars in aid.